Hello, I'm Gina Adams, the founder of Wearology. For the past six months, we've been interviewing professionals to share tips and techniques and technology to help people with physical challenges thrive. As many of you know, I invented buttons to buttons magnetic adapters, and these are sold in sets of 10. It's an easy way to retrofit your button up shirt into a magnetic closure to make dressing and undressing super easy. We are thrilled today to have Mindy Shear with Runway of Dreams and the founder of Gamut, I'm going to say it right, Talent Management. And okay. Mindy, thank you so much for sharing your afternoon with us. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on the show. Absolutely. And Mindy, I know your amazing story. And if you don't mind sharing with our viewers, um, just a quick introduction and your inspiration for Runway of Dreams. Absolutely. And again, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm so excited to be a part of this. So I am actually a fashion designer by trade. Uh, I have a child with muscular dystrophy. And we learned early on that he really was going to struggle with everyday tasks, one of which was dressing himself, the very thing that I love more than anything in the world. I literally go to bed thinking about what I'm going to wear the next day. And it was also, in, in his perspective, the one thing that he dreaded every day because he really struggled with buttons and zippers and fitting pants over his leg braces. So when he was of school age, my husband and I had to kind of find a solve that he'd be able to be able to go to the bathroom on his own. And that was to wear sweatpants every day. And, you know, not to be stereotypical, but he was, you know, he's a boy and it felt like not such a big sacrifice that he would wear sweatpants on a daily, um, but when he was eight years old, he came home and said, mom, I wanna wear jeans. I don't understand why everybody else gets to wear jeans except for me. And I, I, I wanna go into school tomorrow wearing jeans. And it was truly, Gina, a, a kick in the stomach moment, a how did I miss this, you know, part of my life that here I was dedicated to the fashion industry and I needed my eight year old to remind me of the importance of clothing as it relates to who you are as a person, how you show up to the world and truly out of the mouths of babes, he made that very clear that he wanted to be able to wear the same things as everybody else. So that night I ripped apart a pair of his jeans and replaced everything with Velcro and some clever rubber band tricks and he went into school the next day, um, not only having um, addressed himself independently with anything that had had buttons and zippers in it, but with his head held high because he felt just like the other kids. He felt like he was finally able to have choice in what he wore. And, and that to me was a defining moment in my life because I couldn't imagine if my eight-year-old was struggling with this, how were the one billion people on our planet that have a disability, how were they managing clothing challenges? So in 2014, I decided to take my background and have a small goal of changing the fashion industry and <laughs> launched Runway of Dreams to not only educate the industry, but to also show them that modifications could be made to mainstream clothing to make it easier for people with disabilities to wear. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's just, it really brings tears to my eyes. I have two children and I just know that as you mentioned, um, you know, our clothes, it's the first thing people see, right? Um, you know, even before your eyes and your smile, sometimes it's what, and how we convey ourselves. And I thought it was really interesting. You taught me a new terminology called um, enclosed cognition, which I think is a very, under, like, I don't think a lot of people understand this concept. Do you mind sharing that with us a little bit? Absolutely. So when I decided that this is going to be my lifelong journey, I needed a couple of things to happen before I could go to the fashion industry. One was that I needed to understand 
vastly different disabilities because I only knew my world with Oliver. I did not know what somebody that was in a wheelchair full time or limb difference or Down syndrome, what their clothing challenges were. And so I did a year's worth of research to really in, in, engage myself in the population full time. But the other piece, which I thought was just as important, was to be able to speak to the psychological aspect of clothing as it relates to who you are as a person. And enclosed cognition is an actual psychological term that we as humans um, actually have a reaction to what we wear in terms of, you know, there's, there's really a reason why it's called the power suit that, you know, came to be that if you were going to a meeting and you really wanted to command the room, you were wearing a suit that, you know, made you feel great or the perfect little black dress or your favorite pair of jeans. Think about how that emotionally affects you. It is an actual psychological feeling called enclosed cognition that is a direct response to what you wear. Um, and, you know, it can be for religious reasons. It can be just for emotional reasons, but there, and, and conversely to that, really, what Oliver was saying to me was that wearing sweatpants every day made him feel that he was dressing disabled as well as being disabled. And that was really what kind of set me on the track of, I need to be able to, you know, authentically explain that to the industry that there is real power behind clothing and they have the key to it, to making people's lives better while they live it. Absolutely. And I usually, I, I frequently will talk about that as witnessing the impact of Parkinson's on my dad. And you could see it in his eyes. I mean, he was a brilliant PhD um, guitar player. And when he lost that ability to um, control and take care of his himself, you know, that emotional impact is almost worse, right? Because it just, it, it impacts you, it impacts the caregiver, that loss of time we talk about, you know, it's mind, body, and spirit, and it Absolutely. is all interconnected for sure. Um, so that, thank you for sharing that, because I think that um, a lot of people, you know, will kind of talk about universal design, but as you found out pretty quickly, no two no single disability is alike, let alone numerous disabilities, but there are common symptoms that we found. And so I think that just, uh, I mean, you, you joke that it was a small task to bring this in, <laughs> to light in the fashion industry. How's it working for you, huh? I mean, runway of dreams. Really not small, um, definitely a, a lifelong journey, but I... <laughs> I've never um, felt more proud and more sure that this is exactly what um, needs to happen. And I feel honored that I can be a voice of it um, because I want my son to grow up in a world that believes that he is important enough that clothing should be modified so that it is easier for him. And again, the billion people on our planet that have a disability. I mean, as you know, you recognized from your father, it is the one minority that every single one of us is going to be a part of, whether that's just getting old and losing your dexterity, which is why you know your buttons to buttons are are so critically important. But it's it's almost a little mind blowing that we aren't thinking about that. Why aren't we doing? Or now we are, thankfully, but thinking about our own future. Every one of us is going to need adaptive clothing at some point in our life. It's a fact. It is a fact. And everybody deserves to be able to go to the bathroom independently, take care of themselves. And it wasn't until I made the analogy that, um, at least in the U.S., you know, 50 million people have a disability. And that's the size of California and Michigan combined. I mean, that mm -hmm. is a massive population that people, I mean, because a lot of disabilities are invisible, right? You, you don't notice it unless maybe somebody's in a wheelchair or might have crutches or something, you know, but a lot of people do a great job of covering up their um, AFOs, which is their, the 
um, leg braces, right? Um, and so, you know, it's just, if you aren't experiencing it yet, most likely you will, or at least you'll mm -hmm. know somebody. So tell us about some of the resources for one, Runway of Dreams. I was fortunate enough to attend one of the amazing events here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and so just tell us a little bit about like how that got started and, you know, how can people attend and support Runway of Dreams? Thank you. So when we, again, first started, it was definitely with the mission of really working with the industry to have them understand and include this population. But as we started expanding who we are as a foundation, it became very clear that we needed to have charitable programs that supported um, our initiative in a way to make it truly sustainable through different demographics, through the years, et cetera. And the, the couple ways that we do that is first and foremost, we have a wardrobe grant uh, program that, you know, there's definitely individuals or families or facilities that are just not going to be able to afford new adaptive clothing. So we provide wardrobe grants so that they can afford it, they can wear it and feel good about it. So we have that program, but also we're very big believers in the next generation because if we cannot inspire um, and pass this important mission on to the next generation and generations to come, then we're only going to be able to do what, what we can do in this lifetime. So through um, our college club program, which I'm, I'm thrilled that you were able to attend, we are in about 13 universities across the country that have Runway Dreams College Clubs that their um, main goal is to not only spread awareness to the mission of Runway of Dreams, but also um, to have the student bodies connect with able body and, and kid, uh, students with disabilities to come together to share this mission, but they also, their big task is to put on an adaptive runway show, um, which actually now, thankfully, they're still going on and they're being done virtually. Oh, good. Um, that program is actually underwritten by Zappos Adaptive and they provide the products for the models to wear on the runway. So it's been an amazing collaborative effort and just to have the opportunity to work with the, the future students and designers and change makers. Um, it has been incredibly, incredibly exciting and, and fulfilling. Um, and similar to the technology that you developed, we also do scholarship programs for students that are dedicating their studies to adaptive design or product development. Um, and we do a big contest with AATCC, which is a big organization in the fashion industry. Okay. Um, to uh, do it, actually it's an international competition. Um, and this year, actually the competition is to create an accessory that is for um, the population of people with disabilities, whether that's a belt, a bag, jewelry, something that is going to be thinking outside the box on how it can be modified for this population. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So um, I have a ton of questions about that, but because we want to be mindful of time, there's a whole nother company that I also want to talk about. So before I leave the Runway of Dreams topic, though, I just want to give you some feedback that it is working because you're right by influencing and giving people that are able-bodied an opportunity to collaborate and put on a Runway of Dreams show at a university. It opens the eyes and minds to these young, college students that this population um, is important, um, that there is a true need to just integrate. And, and it really, um, I think I mentioned earlier, I used to volunteer teaching people with disabilities how to ski. And I always kind of, I mean, that had such a profound impact on me. And you're doing it like now you know that you're impacting hundreds if not thousands of college students across the nation so that we are more compassionate and caring and um so congratulations on that because it is a massive undertaking and um 
I'm just really excited about your success and the heritage and lineage that you're um, creating. Thank you. So um, from that, my understanding is that Gamut Talent Management kind of was inspired. And so if you could share with us a lot about that, I'm curious. Absolutely. So during the, the evolution of Runway Dreams, what organically started happening was other industries um, started reaching out to us and say, well, we want to be connected to people with disabilities, but just not one type of disabilities, like a cross section of people with disabilities. And, and you at Runway Dreams seem to be able to, to do that. Can you help us do that? For example, Delta Airlines came to us and said, well, we want to be the official airline of people with disabilities. Can you help connect us to you know, a smattering of different disabilities so that they can be included in flight videos and our commercials so that we can really understand what is going to make us a, a great airline for people with disabilities. And of course, we're like, sure. Then we had Procter & Gamble reach out to us and say, well, we are, we're developing a product, but we need a lot of different types of disabilities. Can you help us build a focus group? All the way up to the entertainment industry started reaching out to us. So what occurred to me is that if they were reaching out to a nonprofit for big asks like this, that must mean that there's a hole in the market and there really isn't representation for the population at large, not just a, you know, a side project or not just a division, but to solely focus on just this population. So in 2019, I launched Gamut Management, which is a talent management company exclusively for people with disabilities. And the reason why I called it a talent management company is because I feel everybody has a talent, whether that is filling out a survey, being a part of a focus group, helping to have a voice in how product is developed, testing the product, all the way up to being in our public eye, in commercials, in movies, in television, and really um, putting a focus on rebranding who people with disabilities are in, in, in the public sector. So, um, so Gammon Management was born and it is so exciting. And I absolutely, we have now over 600 clients globally and it's growing every day. And we definitely encourage any of your viewers First, the only stipulation that we have is you have to have a disability. And that is really all that we require. You can go to gametmanagement.com um, to join. But there also the other reason why I, I needed to create something like that is because there is so much power in numbers. And the more people that we get to be a part of the gamut to be able to say, we have an opinion, we have a voice, and we demand that products are made with us in mind um, is what's going to make change happen. And, and I just, I love what it is becoming. I love, um, you know, the amazing stories that I'm able to share and listen to and cultivate and help grow. And it's just been amazing. Uh, absolutely awesome. Wow. Awesome. And thank you for explaining how the name came about, too, because I was curious about Gamut and how that worked. Um, and I think the other important part is like this is employment. This is job opportunity for people because opinions and time, it shouldn't come from, it shouldn't be free, right? Everybody needs to um, have that opportunity for equal pay, right? And that is something that um, it's the 30th anniversary of the ADA. And even though we've come a long ways, we have a long ways to go a with that. Go. And I but think at least we're on the path. At least exactly. we, um, you know, have the ADA. At least we, you know, have support. But, you know, and I say this often, and another reason why I love being on the show is because we have to do this together. Yeah. It won't make change happen if, if we're all in our own silos. We have to come together, support each other, support brands that are designing for our population. And I say that often in, in my podcasts or anytime that I'm able to, that 
it's just as much the responsibility of companies to have adoptive products and options as it is for our population to support them. It is, it is a, it's a two-way street and we have to do our part as the population to say, you know what? Thank you, Tommy Hilfiger. Thank you, Target, for thinking about us as, as consumers. And so therefore we will support you and Zappos Adaptive and Strybright and uh, Kohl's who all are putting resources and money behind Adaptive. And we had to do our job to support that. Yeah, conscious consumerism, you know, whether it is for these products or even just sustainability in general, like how are we spending our really um, finite money wisely to make sure that these industries can be successful? So how can people find um, Gamut Talent? How, like online? What is your website? We are all on our, all of our social platforms. It's Gamut Management, G-A-M-U-T Management. Um, as well as our website, which is gametmanagement.com. You can see our um, videos there about what we do, why we're doing it. Um, and really, again, we welcome every anybody and everybody, no matter what age, no matter what disability, but you do have to have a disability. Thank we you. are not, even, you know, we're, I guess, exclusive in that way, that we're the cool kids, that you have to have a disability. That's right. Cool. That's right. I love it. Um, now... I do have a question as a mom to a mom. Yes. How are you juggling all of this? Because <laughs> time management, man, is tough. And so I am just sitting here like my mind's spinning, thinking about everything that you are juggling. And I really identify and relate to you. So I'm just, I'm wondering if you have any tips for me. I'm going to be a little selfish here. Well, um, the greatest tip that I can give you is that you, you just got to give up the perfection concept. Like my beds are unmade. I'm pretty sure there's dishes in the sink from last night. Um, and if I don't get to it, I don't get to it. I think that is, you know, definitely the piece that I had to just say, I can only do what I can do. And I had to prioritize what is important and being present for my kids is way more important than washing dishes in, in, in my estimation. And then also being able to dedicate time to the business. Um, so I think it's finding a balance, um, giving yourself a little bit of a break that, you know what, there's definitely some days where I'm like, wow, did I drop the ball on being a mom today? Woo, that was a disaster. You know, whether it was forgetting, you know, that my youngest had to read for 25 minutes or whatever the case may be, I, I've just learned how to just give myself a little bit of a break. And, and when I do well, fantastic. Um, and I definitely lowered the bar that if everybody's in bed and safe and fine at the end of the day, it's a success. That's what I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, can I ask, how old are your kids now? My, old, my oldest, my daughter, is a freshman in college. So she's 18. She goes to the University of Texas. Um, Oliver is almost 16, which I can't believe. And then I have a little guy, Bo, who is 11. Okay. So yeah, my son Hayden is also soon to be 16. So that's amazing. And then my daughter is a um, senior in high school and all through COVID, she has been down in our sewing room creating clothes. She, I, I like, it's really incredible. And she wants oh, to apply to FIT, which I saw that you are an alum from there. So I just, yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I don't think. And I, you know, I, I've encouraged, of course, a whole, you know, world of different professionals or professions. And that's kind of where she's, I think, landing. So I think it's amazing. And I'm sure she's going to learn from her mama about how to, you know, include everybody in her, her design. So exactly, you know, and people will talk about universal designs. And so I'm kind of, you know, I'm waiting for um, and there's a lot of, yeah, like you've mentioned, you've highlighted the companies that are addressing adaptive fashion, but I think that there's so much room for just 
you know, whether it's Patagonia, like just let's think about zippers in maybe a different fashion, right? Like how can that work? Um, and so I'm looking forward to it because you have paved the way, you've brought such awareness to the world at large. And um, it's just been a pleasure to meet you. you. Is there any- Congratulations to you, what you've done and what you've created. And I, I think the buttons to buttons and, and wearology is it's so critically important I will leave you with this one of my favorite facts. Do you know when the button and buttonhole was invented? Wow, I should know that, um, <laughs> but I forget. Now, don't worry, the, it's zero people when I ask that question, zero people know, in and out of the fashion industry. It was invented in the 13th century. So oh. the fact that we are still using technology <laughs> developed in the 13th century is preposterous so that's why wearology your buttons to buttons we have opportunity to marry technology and fashion and make it universally able for everybody to wear anything they want so kudos to you keep going i'm 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 in support of you and everything that you've done Oh, thank you, Mindy Shear with Runway of Dreams and Gallant, Gamut Talent Management. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Have a great week and we will be in touch for sure. It's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, Bye. thanks. Bye-bye.